is mine. No, I don't believe in one love, and your love is not my love. You see, my love is far from lovely. Trust me, you don't want to meet it in a dark alleyway. My love is precious. You won't find it in Tesco's or Sainsbury's. My love is priceless. Sachi Sachi does not have my love in the gallery. My love speaks the language of anguish fluently. When my feet don't beat, my love runs free. My love downs pills and whiskey, spits in public, sits in empty public houses. It starts bar fights with itself. It rides shotgun with a baseball bat, knocking out lamp lights. My love is night and dry bun. It's Aragon and the Eye of Sauron. It takes actions like conclusions are foregone. I've met my love, it's a moron. <laughs> My love whispers like a blunderbuss, charging, barging, never count the cost. My love is strange and wondrous, you can't count on my love like abacus. Believe, my love will abscond when needed and I rail on you when needy, cause uh, my love is greedy, comes in one size only. My love never lies, is never bamboozled like a man with no value. My love has its own truths, it remains truthful too. My love does not compromise. He just decided a while ago there was no high ground too high, he could not fall for you. You see, every word of my love inflects on you. It is not the buffest or the toughest, but every muscle in its body it will flex for you. It sits between two lungs full of pride, it will not be taken for a ride, but my love is a foolish thing. It doesn't listen to wise folk. And my love does not joke. There's a furnace behind its smoke no storm can diminish. It often does the stupidest of things, like walking through customs declaring itself damaged goods. <laughs> it will do the impossible. It will fly with fins, unsurprised when it soars, unsurprised when it stalls and it falls and it crashes and it burns and it gets back on up again, back on its stupid feet again to do the same things all over again amongst the coins and the wishing well. My love is the heaviest. And it does not kiss and tell. You ring a bell, string a bell, instant fail. My love will cost you down like Christian Bale. It's its own venom, its own weapon. There is no measure to its madness, no measure of its badness. You cannot unsteady its steadfastness. Black holes across the galaxy will gather round to study the vastness, the majesty, the black of my love. But it can't match my gravity. Frankly, my love doesn't even like your love. <laughs> my love will not walk with your love. It will not talk to your love. It doesn't box with mitten gloves. You war with my love, get written off. More than can chew you beaten off. Beware, my love doesn't care. If yours was there before it's, and yours was the purest, and yours was the surest, and yours was more deserving, my love will eat yours and claim self-defense. Like, what the hell did you expect from something with far from This self-centered, this self-taught, and all its wounds are all self-wrought. My love is nasty. Feisty, it's vicious, conniving, it's crazy, it's petty, it's callous, it's cunning, it's cold, and it's cold, and it's cold, and it's cold, and it's friendly, and it's flaky, it's golden, and it's black, and it's cold, and it's cold, and my love does not like cold play. <laughs> you will not catch my love on a cold day, wandering down the beach, looking at the sky, wondering why the stars are yellow. Nah, Bedford. My love reels against the rain with bruised heels and broken lips. You see, my love is an alchemist. It will turn lead into dust, and I hope you're impressed with that. That's my love. Warts and all. It's the bitterest of pills. And if you know it like I know it, would you love it still? My name is Joshua Dan. I am a poet. I've been a poet for six years. And along with Charlotte Wilkenna, my partner, I run Pojazzy, a spoken word and music organization. Spoken word, music. <laughs> That's what I'm going to talk about for the remainder of my time here. As a spoken word artist, people often come to me and go, Josh, I hate poetry. <laughs> and my response is often, no, you don't. You just haven't heard the right poem. Poe Jazzy is dedicated to the spoken word scene. We are dedicated to helping the spoken word scene grow, to make it more accessible to people, all people of all ages, dispositions, and backgrounds. We believe that the best way to support the art that we love to see is to find new ways and spaces to showcase the artists we love. Alongside Musa Okwanga and Inua Elams, two poets, in our initial year, 
we ran an event at the basement of a burlesque bar in Holborn. There we showcased artists such as Inua Adams, Musa Konga, as well as Kate Tempest, Polar Bear, Scroogeous Pip, and Shabaka Hutchins. As our audience grew, we moved on to other spaces. The Roundhouse, South Bank, Proud Camdens, and most recently, the Royal Albert Hall, Elgar Room. <laughs> <laughs> Musa and Inua moved on to other things, and Shala Okena came on board, and bringing with her her publishing and conceptual experience. She told me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Under her tutelage, we expanded, and we brought concept shows into our repertoire. The most recent one we are doing is a reimagining of Allen Ginsberg's How, written by poets between the ages of 16 and 25. We're calling it How 2.0, clever. <laughs> and we're going to be premiering it at the Roundhouse Theatres in December this year. We've become an online magazine with a focus on collaborating with young artists and the young at heart. We have a blog network, a blog net network, featuring poets such as Bridget Minimore, Shemaine Suleiman, and Kevin Pocock giving them a platform to not just talk about their art, but the things close to their heart as well, which could be anything from old photographs to feminism to just having a really, really, really long rant about Lily Allen's video. <laughs> <sighs> we have a visual director, Bruno Ramos, who films our live music sessions, which we upload to our YouTube page. And we have a team of young web assistants, reviewers, and young marketing assistants to help us find the spoken word and music that we love and love to talk about. Our most recent and most ambitious endeavor to date has been our foray into publishing. We're going into the spoken word book business. We were told that's where the money was. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to keep it really simple because I'm a simple guy. I was like, yeah, we just get a bunch of poets, we get a bunch of book, uh, a bunch of poems, we'll stick it in a book, picture on the top, acknowledgements on the back, champagne for everybody, big lunch party, rinse, repeat, carry it on. <laughs> Charlotte was like, nah. <laughs> She's a little bit more progressive. Together we, we sat and we talked about um, what makes spoken word work. The immediacy the vitality, that intimacy. It doesn't matter where you see spoken word. It's always you and them. It's happening right there in front of you, whether it's live or in front of a screen. That sometimes it's honest, often clever, often funny, heartfelt, heartbreaking, moving as the best spoken word is. How it can often feel like someone has grabbed your attention out of a world of distractions. Somebody you don't know, with only their voice, a bit of rhyme, and the strength of their ideas, has taken that jumbled mesh of emotions and thoughts in here and here, and articulated it. We talked about spoken word relationship with technology, in, in particular the internet. Poems on Facebook notes. Poems as Facebook statuses. Quotes and haikus on Twitter. Poems and pictures on Tumblr. Spoken word pieces on SoundCloud. Nowadays, it is not uncommon for a young poet such as Holly McNeish to sit in front of a webcam, a webcam in an empty room on a laptop, upload a poem onto YouTube, and get millions and millions of hits. People want to connect. And when they do, they want to share it. And we talked about the physical mediums. In particular, smartphones. How many people here have a smartphone? iOS? Android? Fight! Thanks for that joke. Four week. Up to half of the adults in the UK have a smartphone. And that number is going to grow. 
Three quarters of 16 to 24 year olds in the UK have one. Smartphones are awesome. I don't have mine with me right now and I'm terrified. <laughs> Man's greatest invention to avoid eye contact with people. <laughs> Smartphones have brought us apps. There's apps for so many things. Come on in, come on in, it's alright. <laughs> Smartphones have brought us apps. I use an app to get here. Google Apps, but it's not Apple because Apple just gets you lost. <laughs> I was watching a YouTube app while I was waiting for the show to begin. There's an app for everything the marketing goes. And that brought us to our last thought. How about an app for modern, original poetry happening right now in the UK? And that's how we ended up with Po Jazzy Season 1. A free app celebrating original and modern spoken word in the UK, launching on iOS and Android platforms in 2014. We call it a season because when it launches next year, it will last for 16 weeks, featuring 16 poems, one poem per week, featuring artists from the UK between the ages of 18 and 30. Everyone from up-and-comers like Amanda Coley, who only has a handful of poems to her names, to Luke Wright, who writes a new spoken word show every year. Almost every year, I don't know. <laughs> Each poem will be downloaded to your phones in the written form as an audio recording by the poets themselves and a video recording. We have also worked with four visual directors to create visual representations of four specifically chosen poems, which will be released once a month for four months. We're hoping that once the app has finished its run, we're going to get more visual directors to add more poems as the time goes on. We've also added sharing options, Twitter and Facebook buttons, so if anyone finds a poem or part of a poem they like, they can share with their social networks. And last but not least, links. We want people to explore the poets that they like. If you find a poem that you enjoy, you can click on the, the, the poet, find out what else they're doing, and find some more poems. So why have we done this? Because we can. <laughs> We've done this because this is one step in a growing scene. And we feel now, more than ever, spoken word is getting bigger and it's all around us. It is on television in ads. It's on Jews Holland. It's in uh, Channel 4's Random Acts if you stay up late enough. <laughs> Roundhouse Slam has been going from strength, from strength to strength every year for the last four or five years. We feel spoken word works very well with apps. Almost perfect. It's short enough for three or four minutes. It's direct. It's non-elitist. What do we want from this? We want more people to engage in spoken word. I want more people to find the poems that they like, to find the spoken word artists they like. I want to see more spoken word and poetry establishments experimenting with technology. Hopefully get some more poetry publishing houses, houses making, houses, make, houses making more apps. I would like to inspire young poets and young spoken word artists to experiment with technology or even just collaborate with young creatives. It would be awesome if young poets go find new young directors and they make spoken word short films. Or maybe work with producers and make spoken word disco albums. Or even things I haven't talked about yet, like a spoken word graphic novel. I once read a spoken word novel that was written about Shakespeare, and that was what got me to Shakespeare. Imagine what the future could hold. And most importantly, when we do come around to making Poo Jazzy season two, because we will, but damn it, <laughs> I would like there to be an even bigger, a bigger audience for spoken word. More young people and people young at heart engaging in spoken word, be that in a, as an audience member or just people writing and sharing words about the things they hold dear and love.
I'll be around for a bit if you want to talk to me. Otherwise, thank you very much.